In rural Japan, a strange silence is falling. Schools stand empty, hospitals close maternity wards, not from disaster but from a demographic winter decades in the making. Japan is shrinking. Its population is not just aging, it's vanishing. Alarming experts worldwide. This quiet crisis unfolds not with a bang, but with shuttered shops and abandoned train stations. What's happening in Japan is a warning for Europe's capitals, from Rome to Berlin, Madrid to Warsaw. The same forces that pushed Japan to the brink are now accelerating across Europe. The warning signs are no longer whispers, they're alarms. Europe's leaders are distracted by immediate crises, but a deeper challenge is taking root, a demographic shift threatening the continent's very fabric. For a population to remain stable, women need to have about 2.1 children each, the replacement rate. Japan's fertility rate has hovered around 1.2 for decades and the consequences are profound, hundreds of thousands fewer citizens each year. This isn't a future projection it's happening now, Europe is next. Italy, Spain and Greece have birth rates nearly as low as Japan's and even France and Sweden are declining. The social and economic pillars of post-war Europe, growing workforces, reliable tax bases, vibrant communities, are all built on the assumption of a stable population. As that foundation cracks, Europe must pay close attention to Japan's unfolding story. The numbers are stark. Japan's population peaked at 128 million in 2008. Today, it's below 123 million. Projections warn it could fall below 100 million by mid-century and possibly 63 million by 2100, less than half its peak. This is a peacetime population collapse rarely seen in a developed country. Europe's numbers are just as grim. The EU's fertility rate is about 1.5, far below replacement. Southern Europe is especially hard hit. Italy's birth rate is 1.2, 2, Spain and Greece are similar. Even Germany's recent population growth is driven by immigration, not native births. These aren't just statistics, they're shaping the future. Eurostat projects the EU's population could start shrinking within a decade. By 2050, over 30% of many member states will be over 65, creating a massive imbalance. Fewer young workers will be supporting a growing number of retirees, a demographic pyramid turned upside down. This rapid shift gives governments little time to adapt, the workforce shrinks, the tax base erodes, and demand for pensions and healthcare explodes. Japan's reality today is Europe's tomorrow. The effects of a shrinking population are everywhere. Economically, fewer workers mean labor shortages, stalled businesses, and lost innovation. In Japan, help wanted signs go unanswered, and family businesses close for lack of successors. This cycle of stagnation shrinks both the workforce and consumer market, pulling the economy downward. Pension systems built on many workers supporting few retirees are now inverted. Japan has raised retirement ages and cut benefits. Europe's welfare states face the same threat. Healthcare costs soar as the population ages, just as the tax base shrinks. Socially, the decline is visible in schools, over 400 close each year in Japan, hollowing out communities. When schools close, young families stay away, accelerating decline. Rural Italy, Spain and Eastern Europe now see ghost villages inhabited only by the elderly. Abandoned homes, 10 million in Japan, are a physical sign of decline. Local governments offer them for free, desperate for residents. The domino effect is clear, fewer babies, fewer workers, weaker economies, strained services and empty towns. The vibrancy of youth is replaced by stillness and loss. This is the real cost of demographic decline. Japan's crisis began with its post-war economic miracle. Booming industries drew young people from rural areas to megacities like Tokyo and Osaka. Urbanization fueled growth, but also made family life harder. Small, expensive apartments and high living costs discouraged large families. Social attitudes shifted. Women gained education and career opportunities, delaying or foregoing marriage and children. The average age of first marriage for women rose from 24 to over 29. The cost of raising a child soared with intense educational pressures and expensive schooling. Japan's corporate culture demanded long hours, leaving little time for family. The result birth rates fell in the 1970s and never recovered. The economic bust of the 1990s deepened the crisis as uncertainty discouraged family formation. The paradox, the very success that made Japan rich also set the stage for its demographic decline. What began as gradual change became a deep-seated crisis. Japan's story is a warning of how prosperity can sow the seeds of long-term decline. Japan's demographic story is now Europe's. In cities like London, Paris and Munich, 
Soaring housing costs trap young people in endless renting, making family life unaffordable. Economic insecurity makes having children feel risky. Social attitudes have shifted, marriage rates are down, and women have children later, often in their 30s. Higher education and career focus while positive for gender equality mean fewer children per family. The traditional family model is no longer the norm. Many delay or opt out of parenthood. A new factor climate anxiety. Many young Europeans hesitate to have children, fearing for the planet's future. This eco-anxiety adds to the economic and social pressures. The parallels with Japan are striking and concerning. Europe faces high living costs, insecurity, changing values and new anxieties, all pushing birth rates lower. The cracks that appeared in Japan are now visible across Europe raising urgent questions about the continent's future. Governments have tried to reverse demographic decline with cash incentives, baby bonuses, child allowances, tax breaks. The results? Disappointing. Temporary bumps in birth rates but no lasting change. The problem isn't just money. Young people want stability, work-life balance, and affordable childcare. In Japan, lack of childcare and punishing work culture matter more than cash. Europe is learning. You can't bribe people into parenthood. Immigration is another proposed fix. Germany relies on it to fill labor gaps but it brings social and political challenges. Japan resists large-scale immigration valuing cultural homogeneity. In Europe, rapid migration has fueled backlash and political polarization. Neither cash incentives nor migration are magic bullets. These interventions have been too little, too late, failing to address the root causes. The demographic crisis demands deeper solutions. The failure to solve the demographic puzzle threatens Europe's future. Economic stagnation looms, fewer workers, fewer consumers, less innovation. Japan's lost decades of low growth and low inflation are a warning. Europe's generous social systems, pensions, healthcare, depend on a steady stream of young workers. As the ratio flips, these systems become unsustainable. Governments face tough choices, raise taxes, cut benefits or push retirement ages higher, none popular, all divisive. Immigration debates intensify, fueling populism and polarization. The result, a more divided, unstable society with rising intergenerational tension. The decline is slow and grinding, not sudden. A future of stagnation, strained safety nets and political unrest. Japan's path is a cautionary tale. Europe stands at the same crossroads, with its choices now shaping its destiny. To avoid Japan's fate, Europe needs a new approach. First, build a truly family-friendly society, invest in high-quality affordable childcare. When parents have reliable care, they're more likely to work and have more children. Countries like France and Sweden show the benefits of prioritizing early childhood support. Second, transform work culture, promote flexible hours, remote work, and generous parental leave for both parents. When fathers share childcare, the burden on mothers eases, making family life more feasible. Third, reform retirement, create flexible pathways, retrain older workers and link pensions to demographic realities. Finally, boost productivity, invest in automation, AI and digitalization to offset a shrinking workforce. Technology should augment not replace human work, freeing people for creative high-value roles. Productivity is key to sustaining growth and funding social systems in an aging society. Europe must act boldly and comprehensively. The time for half measures is over. Europe may need to accept and adapt to a future with fewer people. Success shouldn't be measured by population growth but by quality of life and sustainability. A smaller population could mean less environmental strain and more livable cities. Urban planning must focus on revitalizing communities and concentrating services where people live. In rural areas, it may mean consolidating villages and supporting viable regional hubs. Innovation is key new ways to care for the elderly, personalized education, and flexible careers for longer lives. A shrinking population can drive social and technological breakthroughs. Japan's warning is not doom, but a call to action. Europe has foresight and a chance to choose a different path. By supporting families, reforming work and retirement and planning smartly, Europe can weather the demographic storm. The future can be defined by resilience and innovation, not decline.